Awesome. So I am super excited to be talking to you today, Jordan. <laughs> I'm um, excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to do this because um, I just know your story is going to help other people, inspire people. So I'm really excited to dig in um, mm-hmm. to get things going. I mean, maybe just share a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're calling from, and then we'll d- jump into like your story. Like where, yeah. how did it all come to be where you are right now? So um, so I grew up in Arkansas and in the middle of nowhere. I graduated with 27 people in my whole class. What? <laughs> yeah. Um, I always knew I wanted to do something with writing, even though my school being so small, I was never taught grammar. I was never taught anything English related. Like what? we would just sit in class. <laughs> and so I like you know get in as to a senior and start taking online classes and teachers are like you guys don't know how to use commas or anything (laughs) and so we had to be retaught from seniors for grammar and so that's still something I'm kind of nervous about all the time but Mm -hmm. I've gotten a lot better with it um so I ended up going to college for English um and I was finishing at about the height of COVID mm-hmm. I was doing online because I have a lot of anxiety I like to uh, stay in my house mm-hmm. um, yeah so I kind of didn't know what to do with that degree I mm-hmm. had no idea what to do with my English degree I was like I just I can't just be a writer I didn't know how to mm-hmm. and so um Sarah popped up one day on my Facebook and I was like oh this is interesting and I ended up actually DMing her on Instagram <laughs> And I was like, do you think I could do this? And I ended up buying it. Um, and it paid off for me within two months. Nice. So, so now you, I totally relate to your story. Cause I always like mm-hmm. thought I wanted to be a writer, but I was like, I don't really want to be like a drunk, starving, like me, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is the image that was painted for me. Um, and so I really, really resonate with that. So this was about how long ago that you started? Um, tw- well, it would have been 2020. Yeah, yeah. 2020. That's what mm-hmm. I thought. So was it like in the middle of the pandemic, like paint a little bit of a picture for us? So it was in the middle of the pandemic and I worked at a school and I worked at that school and I was making, it's so sad. And I don't even know how it's legal. 16000 a year. I don't know oh, how fine. I lived on that. Like full time, I was there 8 a.m. till 3.30. And like I taught kids, I had my own classes. I don't know how it was like, okay. But mm-hmm. in the fine print, it it was. Mm-hmm. So um, I kept with it because I was like, maybe I can be a teacher with my degree. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of when they started letting us out for COVID. So I just stuck with it because I didn't have to go to work anyways. And so mm-hmm. I did the class while I was at home. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at home for three or four months and I think I did the whole class in like a month. Oh, wow. You cruised yeah. through it. Cruised. I was up all night doing it. Like, yeah, yeah. it's pretty impressive. <laughs> so two months you're bringing in clients and mm-hmm. now, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the niche that you write in or the types of copy that you write? Like, what does that look like? Um, I do mostly skincare. I just started with a men's skincare brand, which is totally different. And it's been a lot of help for my fiance (laughs) getting (laughs) like right tone from for the man. But um, I'm their full time content right now. Like I'm head of content. I do that for them. Um, I also do a makeup brand and Mm. then a few other skincare. So really just like makeup, skincare, sometimes health. Yeah. That's amazing. And so how many clients do you have right now? Ish. Or um, how many? Yeah. Um, right now I have five and a lot of I've kind of learned with like freelancing, I guess, or having your own business right now. I haven't got my LLC. I've been bad. So um I've kind of learned that a lot of clients like come like every other month. So I don't do retainers with some of them. They just kind of come to me when they need work and it works for me. That's something that probably won't work with everybody, mm-hmm. but it works for me and like the clients that I've gotten to know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, if you can, I mean, so 
for me, I've always said that I only do retainers where I don't have people commit more than, mm-hmm. so it's like literally month by month and you just have to show up and keep doing good work. Um, and it sounds like really you're doing kind of the same thing. Yeah. And so do you mind breaking down a little bit for us? Like, what do you, what do you earn on average? How many hours per week do you work? Cause people just like love to know. It's like the oh, day. Yeah. I to know too. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to know. Cause they want to know what it's like um, possible. Yeah. So I, I will work myself to the bone and I will get everything done on Monday. Like that's how I am. Mm-hmm. So I kind of break up my day to in the mornings. I give myself a lot of time with myself. Mm-hmm. I, whether that's a bubble bath at six in the morning because oh, I want to or yeah. have breakfast with myself and just hang out in my own mind. I don't know. Yeah. But I do that every morning and then I'll start working at around eight and I'll finish probably one or one thirty. Nice. And that's with me making myself stop. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so amazing. So yeah. like 20, 25 hours a week. Yeah, I think, yeah, I try to stick to about that. That's amazing. So and then you have the whole afternoon to like do. do. Yeah. Yes. And it's amazing to feel just so free of worry. Yeah. Having a real, like a a normal job, I guess. Yeah. Um, And having someone above you, that always was hard for me. Cause I was like, am I going to be yelled at? Am I going to get in trouble? And I was the model employee everywhere. But Mm. that's something that's always been in my mind since I started working at 15. Yeah. Oh, I relate to that. Just like the constant mm-hmm. and like somebody's always looking over your shoulder. Yes. It's just like not a good feeling. And now nobody's looking over your shoulder, huh? It's so nice. And I mean, I don't need that either. That's not something that I've ever needed. I can be my own boss and make sure everything's done on time. So it works for me really well. Yeah. And do you Tell us about your clients. You, I, you had just shared with me that you love what you do mm-hmm. and you love your clients. It sounds like, and they're pretty well. Do. Yeah. So how does that feel? Um, I think that I've gotten super lucky in the client department because they have all been so genuinely kind and nice and welcoming and they want to keep the work inside that company too, if they can. So I've learned a lot of about myself and how I want to keep learning skills to, I don't know where I'm going, but just to have all these skills. But um, the clients I've had are just the best. I get a lot of like make- makeup samples and stuff, which is really fun. And That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I've just had great clients. I've only had one or two that have been a little bit harder to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like how almost like demeaning mm-hmm. which you've talked about too but, it. Um, yeah <laughs> but the good outweighs the bad in this always the, the clients I have are just phenomenal yeah no that's been my experience too I think oh I, I've probably I mean I've had over probably 50 clients maybe more and there's like two that were mm-hmm problem clients in that you know but they do stand out that's the thing about things like that those stories always stand out and have a way of kind of like outshining some of the other stuff but by and large I feel like usually the people you know we come across are pretty pretty awesome people so I'm so 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 glad um and so, yeah, so your clients, I think you shared with me that well, you don't have to share who the celebrity is, but like one of them recently I, signed. I actually can if you guys want to know. Oh, yeah. Tell us um, about it. It's so exciting. So I don't know if we have anybody like grew up in the 90s, like MTV and all that, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. He was really big then, and his name is Simon Rex. Do you guys know him? I do. Yeah. He's in some movies and stuff, and he's popular popping back up into comedy he's best friends with Pete Davidson and so he's been sending us like I got to go through his interview the other day before anybody else and like Um, write a blog on it and it was so fun that's so fun it sounds like you're having a lot of fun with your clients too I am I'm doing some things that I never thought I would do so yeah really tell us more about that um I also helped with podcasts so I 
Oh, she knows who that is. <laughs> so I reached out to a lot of celebrity agents. I was in touch with a lot of agents and that was super cool for someone that's like from nowhere, Arkansas, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I got to write interview questions for different celebrities that we sent to from the podcast. Um, I've transcribed cool. the interviews for blogs. Um, amazing. Yeah, that's all I can think of right now. But. Like all these like create like new experiences that mm -hmm. one of the things I love about your story is like, you know, you are from a smaller town and you still live there, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. So um, that's one of the things that's super important about this is like you have the accessibility of like career options outside of like what is like available like in your mm -hmm. town. Yeah. Which is so important. Absolutely. And I've always wanted to leave here. And I think we have a plan to in the near future. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. On Anywhere. The, on the vision board. <laughs> Anywhere that's not 120 degrees right now. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. I can not 120 degrees right now. That's nuts. Uh, so um, do you mind sharing with us how you got some of your first few clients? People also always love to hear about client acquisition. So I got to the part in the lesson where it was like, go ahead and send your cold email, you know? And so I sent it and I don't know what the stats are on this, but I got a reply. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I ended up working with her for two years. <gasps> the I first don't, I don't one I you sent? sent? The first one. Oh my gosh. I, I sent it. That. I sent it in my head. I was like, this is meant to be. She's going to reply. And she replied. That so. is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. And so she was a client for two years. Wow. And I like, I lend everything to her because she helped me build a portfolio of over like 150 articles. Wow. Yeah. And I worked for like three of her websites. Um, I did a lot of her email stuff. I did everything for her. And we just recently parted ways because she was like mini minimizing what she's doing right uh -huh. now. But um, yeah, that's that was just like, I got really lucky there. So. Mm, it's not just luck. What did you, um, that's just so amazing. Uh, definitely can't let you sell yourself short. Do you mind sharing what was kind of in that cold email or was there anything in particular? I don't know what about it caught her eye. I personalized it a lot. Like I'm talking probably too much personalization. Mm -hmm. Um, I've learned since then to, to not do it that much because it takes so long. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think it was just being honest. I was like, hey, I'm a new copywriter. I'd love to help you out. Um, I would love to start updating your blog for you. Sorry, my dogs. This is um, okay. But yeah, she just replied back and she she said, what do you charge? And I said, what you said. I said 200 and she never questioned it. She was like, let's go. Yeah. Amazing. And that was, we did one a week and then we ended up going to like six a month nice yeah that's amazing wow that's so cool and do you do you mind sharing what you earn now like does it fluctuate is it like pretty yeah you asked me that I'm sorry no don't worry I just making sure you're comfortable answering. oh yeah um it's really anywhere between four to six or seven thousand right now and nice. I do think that I could get that up if I put more than the 20 hours in but I'm okay right now and I'm comfortable and I'm happy so that's that enough for me. the most important thing. And I'm glad you said that because that's like something I'm really pushing back on right now is like, mm -hmm. that is it. If you're working, earning what you want to earn make, and working the amount of hours you want to work and you've created like the life of freedom that you set out to create, like you did it. Like that mm -hmm. is so, so incredible. I would love to hear from you. Like, well, actually, let me back up because I was going to ask you, um, what what would you say is the most surprising thing about like how this has all turned out for you? Oh God, I really think it was, um, I don't know which video you said this in, but you said, you know, more than you think, you know, mm -hmm. and that you, you're probably sitting there hearing Sarah say that and you're like, no, she's wrong. No, she's <laughs> right. <laughs> you know more than you think, you know, um, it's crazy how you can just go into a cold call 
or a call and um you're just like I'm gonna do awful I don't know what to say I don't know what to do and it just comes like it's you know more than you know I promise and SEO isn't as complicated as you think it is Mm -hmm. and I feel like in my head I made it like this giant impossible puzzle Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but and it's something that I keep researching like every day I try and stay up like on top of it Mm -hmm. but you do you know more than you know and I feel like that's the most surprising thing for me specifically when you get on that first client call yes everyone's like I don't feel ready this is too fast (laughs) and I still listen to your samples before my calls like really? every single one of them, I usually will like sit in the kitchen and do dishes or something and listening to the calls before yeah. I have any, any call. Oh my gosh. The, uh, that lesson's actually been updated with a new script. I don't know if oh, you has it? Yeah, there's a new script. I need script. to go back and listen. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've learned a lot in the last few years, just about like, you know, calls and, um, how to structure it in a way that feels like really genuine and authentic, but is also like you know, feeling comfortable asking for them to commit to like working with you, the Mm -hmm. whole thing that people have to work through. So, um, that's, that's awesome. So, uh, is there anything else you wanted to kind of share about your journey or something that you would love to like share with other people? Um, like along this journey, I, I would say that I was, I was working closely with another copywriter in this group this week. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had told, she asked me what like the best advice was that I got. And it was Mm -hmm. actually from that first lady that I worked with. And she would always say, always put can or may in front of everything and never make any promises Mm -hmm. and never say should. And those have been the rules I've lived by my whole talking to clients. Yes, like, so it, whether you're writing or whatever, never make promises and say can and may and you're writing all mm-hmm. it, never you should. She said, never use that because it just feels like you're preaching. Mm-hmm. So that's something that, that's a word that I never use. So that's my advice. I love that. I also don't use the word should. Mm-hmm. I would call it shitting on yourself. It's no good. <laughs> Nobody likes yeah. the word should, not really. <laughs> yeah. Um. Can you actually tell us a little bit about your LinkedIn uh because that was something we had talked about yeah yeah um I that look like and you know yeah um I've sent a lot of cold emails in my life now and Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it was just like my jam so Mm -hmm. I started like stalking Wendy on the group I typed her name and I was seeing wherever she would answer someone about LinkedIn I would just like study it And I know she mentions a lot of posting, but I don't post on mine. I reply to people's posts and I stay like engaged. Um, But I really push for LinkedIn testimonials on Mm -hmm. my LinkedIn from those clients. So it's official. And I have had every client say that that is one of the reasons they replied to my LinkedIn message. Oh my God. They loved how many testimonials I had and just like you could tell that I had taken time with my clients so Mm, that's amazing that's super helpful Mm -hmm. that's like low commitment if you don't even have Mm -hmm. to post and you're just showing up and like responding to things that's even like I mean everyone everyone can do that right and like like I said I have a lot of anxiety so if it's like something that people are going to look at me or look at my name or something I don't want that so I just engage and don't post (laughs) yeah oh my gosh um the other thing that you said you wanted to touch on was talking about imposter syndrome I would love Mm -hmm. to hear some of your thoughts on that either how yeah still struggle with imposter syndrome I had it last night when I had to go through google analytics because it always gives me imposter syndrome um it's something that I feel like I've worked a lot this year and not even just in writing, I think in life. Like mm-hmm. I've always had the, I'm not good enough, so I try mm-hmm. that type of thing. And I feel like that's something I'm probably going to battle with, but I'm getting better at battling with it. I so. love that. that is so, so, so amazing. Listen, anytime I open any tech dashboard, I like almost go like cross-eyed and like oh, my yeah. vision goes blurry. So I get oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Even like tech things that I use like every single day, I'm still like, 
It's like something about the, like all the analytics right in front of you. That's just like so overwhelming, but we still get a. I'm not a numbers person. So that makes it even worse. Yeah. Well, we're all practicing for sure. And Mm -hmm. like, look how far you've come. It's amazing. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, um, I would love to, if there's anything else you'd like to share, you wanted to talk about, um, is there anything you wanted to, else you wanted to touch on? Maybe Um, man. Oh, sorry. I saw the questions in the group. If you would like me to answer those. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Um, Someone asked the, so I'm looking at notes. If you see me looking down, um, the best part of my routine is like I said, I, or the part that's maybe the most successful, I guess. It's like I said, I spend a lot of time with myself in the morning and I allow myself to have those mornings because I've never had one working at a job. You know, you're always up at six going to work. I know. So, Crazy. Um, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's um, one of those things that's easy to forget too. Yeah. You know, like the thing that you achieve and you're like, wow, I have this thing now. And then you know, two years goes by and you start to take it for granted, or I do this, I start to take it for granted and I forget. And I'm like, you know, I have to constantly like remind myself that that's like, was a dream come true for me at some point. I love to do that. And I know people here are probably dealing with what I did with the guilt of it. Um, Mm -hmm. You're taking time. I should definitely be working. Sometimes I'll text my fiance and I'm like, do you think I can like stop right now? (laughs) <laughs> he's like yes like getting permission right <laughs> but that does get better too I'm starting to embrace letting myself have a good life and a happy mm-hmm. one so oh I love that I love yeah. that that's amazing you have another one um I was gonna say probably staying positive has been a big thing for me mm-hmm. um I work on a lot of affirmations in my mind every morning saying like I can do this look how far I've came I have accomplished these things and that has helped me a lot especially with the imposter syndrome um and I think that's about it yeah that's amazing mm-hmm. I love that I love that you touched on that because it is a thing that where people feel like guilty that's a common mm-hmm. thing that people come up against especially if their partner's still working like a traditional nine to five you're like oh look at them like you know grinding yeah. away eight hours a day and I'm like kind of wrapping up at 1 p.m like he's back there smiling at me now he knows oh he knows yeah <laughs> it's so good it's so good though I love that you touched on that I actually remember I posted a day in the life of on my Instagram once and this guy responded and was like how self-indulgent and I was like self-indulgent I'm literally just like reading a book in the morning, doing some client work, cooking, like starting dinner in the middle of the day. Like like people don't know how to feel happy anymore. I know. I know. Mm. I just, and I didn't like, it really didn't, uh, I didn't take it personally at all. I was like, I said like, what about this is self-indulgent? Cause I think we live in a world where we think if we're not like grinding away for a company, Mm -hmm. then that's self-indulgent. Like, Mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah so um w- a question that was just submitted was having anxiety and imposter syndrome how did you keep going in the beginning and doing client outreach phone calls are scary listen I'm scared right now so it's okay <laughs> um get it so I think in my mind I was like there's no other option for me mm. I was like I am not cut out for doing these things the one thing I am good at is writing and I am going to make it work no matter how I feel or anything and I think um my fiance pushed me a lot and Mm -hmm. he was like you know you you need to do it if you're gonna do it stick with it and Mm -hmm. so I was home anyways at during the pandemic so Mm -hmm. it just worked out to where I could just put all my energy into it so That's actually, I'm so glad you shared that. And it's bringing up something for me because phone calls were like terrifying to me. I used to flush bright red. Oh, and I I was like, I was like starting out before, like now all calls are kind of expected to be on Zoom, which I'm like back in the day, it was like over the phone still, which I'm grateful for because nobody could see how red I turned. (laughs) 
So I really, really relate to this. And, Mm -hmm. um, but my experience, and I'd love to hear your experience is that after that, like initial phone call, you don't really like have to hop on the phone that much anymore. Like a lot of it happens over email. So it's just like that thing you got to get over. I think, um, I have a client that I've talked to once and we've been together for like a year. I -hmm. have one that I'm do meet with weekly, but it's not necessarily me talking it's kind of me listening to what's going on with the business right now and Mm -hmm. they just kind of want me there you know but really it is just yeah it really is just that one call and you really don't have to talk very often (laughs) yeah so that's like it's like the thing you just you kind of have to get over you do know more than you think you do or you realize by the time you're at that point in the process and the course like you know a lot you know, you a lot. <laughs> it's just a matter of, you know, getting past those blocks in your head. And I think everyone can do it. It just takes a lot of working mm-hmm. on yourself to do it. And also keeping in mind that those calls are like you discovering things about them. So you're not, it's not a job interview. Mm-hmm. You're just asking them a lot of questions and yeah. that also takes the pressure off. And the things that you dread that they're going to ask, they probably won't ask. Yes, it's true. <laughs> the like, things that are like that really yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is a really interesting question from Tanya. What was it about the first client that made you choose her to reach out to? So it was actually no rhyme or reason. She popped up on my LinkedIn first when I typed in um skincare CEO, I think it was. And I went to her page and she also had like a sister website. And so I clicked over and I noticed both had blogs, but both weren't being updated as often as they probably should be. She was probably uploading one or two like every other month. Um, And they were written by her and I could tell because they were very personal. Mm -hmm. So I just took it and ran with it and... Yeah, that's really the only reason I chose. She had two websites. I loved her story. She's actually doing skincare and she wrote books for um, disabled kids, which I really liked. Love that because I worked at a school. Um, and I don't know, her story just resonated with me. So I reached out to her and it turned out great. Yeah. And it, I don't know. I just, I, I love that about, you know, being freelance and just all the conversations we have around being conscious copywriters. Like, you got to reach out and work with somebody because you were in alignment with their values. Like you saw her Mm -hmm. values and you wanted to be a part of that. And that's like, it's just such a good feeling. Mm -hmm. So how did you choose your niche? Um, so I've always really been into makeup and skincare. When I was in high school, I was like a little goth queen. I had like the dark eyeliner and stuff. And so I did a lot of makeup. Um, And then I started taking care of my skin a lot. And over COVID, I fell in love with skincare. Like, I don't wear makeup hardly anymore. I'm just like, love skincare. Mm -hmm. And so I just went with beauty and it wound up, I found more skincare people and I'm happy about that. So yeah, that's I love that. When you get to just pick the thing that you enjoy and make it your business is so Mm -hmm. good. Um, so did you, some clarifying questions, did you post your portfolio on LinkedIn? So, okay. So what I did then was I had probably three samples when I first started out and one was in the group and she had, the girl had used it on her mom's website and wrote me a testimonial in exchange. And then Mm -hmm. the other two were medium. Mm -hmm. And so I had those live links in the emails because I think live links make a huge difference and Mm -hmm. people love lists. So I still like, if I'll ask my clients if I can use these um, pieces and I'll live link them in cold emails or LinkedIn messages. And that has been a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. So once you get that one or two piece that, that you can link, like you're good. The thing that I, yeah, that's, I'm so glad we touched on that because the thing to, I feel like to remember is that even if you have a portfolio on your website or wherever, you still need to be the one who puts it in front of the person that you're doing your outreach for. Like Mm -hmm. there, most people are just like not going to take the time to like do the digging. And so you got to make sure you're always putting it like right in front of them, making it super easy for them to find your pieces. Love that. Yeah, Um, that's 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, as you go. I don't know what I was going to say. You're good. <laughs> Um, so, uh, another clarifying question is that, did you say you reached out to celebrities in the beginning, but it was um, on behalf of your client, right? Um, that was, yeah, it was behalf of her. She had asked me, um, she actually gave me a list of all the people she wanted. Uh, and I just had to find like the agent emails and stuff, which was very hard mm -hmm. for some of them. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's the extent of the celebrity re outreach I've done. Wait, that's so, that's so funny. That's like mm -hmm. cold email. That's like digging up. Like Maybe that's why I got so good at cold emailing because I was like sending all different <laughs> kinds of like yeah. cold emails. And you became like a pro like email hunter. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, uh, I love your story so much, Jordan. Thank you for taking the time to share it with us. Um, I have one last question, and that is when you, if you could go back in time and talk to Jordan before this whole journey, when you were thinking about like signing up for Eight Way to Freedom and uh, not quite sure, what would you say to yourself at the beginning of this whole journey, knowing what I you think, know now? I think I would say that it doesn't matter your age or the people around you success looks different for everyone and it'll happen for everyone at different times and I think like not comparing yourself to others is a big thing because mm -hmm. that was like my worst flaw I guess was comparing myself to others mm -hmm. so if I could go back I would say you know just focus on you and quit worrying about what everyone else thinks or what everyone else is doing mm, that's so huge I mm -hmm. love love that well, that was beautiful. I think that's a nice thank thing you. to leave everyone with. And um, yeah, thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing your story. So, so amazing. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for having me. Yee. Well, I will see you in the community. We appreciate yes. you. And uh, yeah. Bye everyone. Bye.